Hello, in this video we are going to take a look at this book. It is called Combinatorial Theory. It was written by Marshall Hall Jr. This is a beautiful textbook. It has uh, the dust jacket. It's got a little string here and Jin and Blaisdell. Here's some additional Blaisdell books. Just a very, very nice... Um, it just feels nice in my hands. It just feels like I don't know. It just feels expensive. It's just like a very nice, well-made book. Um, you can just like feel the quality in your hands when you hold it. It's just, it's just incredible. As a collector, this is like wow, top of the line uh, dust jackets here. Very nice. All right, so I'm gonna open it up. There's a bunch of names on the inside cover. There's like a name and an address, and there's like two other names. So I think several people have used this book, Combinatorial Theory. And then someone just wrote 1967 right there. A Blaisdell book in pure and applied mathematics. Marshall Hall Jr., California Institute of Technology. And then here's, here's the copyright, 1967. This must be the first printing. Yeah. 1967. Here's the preface. Let's, let's take a look at it. Combinatorial theory is the name now given to the subject formally called combinatorial analysis or combinatorics, though these terms are still used by many people. Like many branches of mathematics, its boundaries are not clearly defined, but the central problem may be considered that of arranging objects according to specified rules and finding out in how many ways this may be done. If the specified rules are very simple, then the chief emphasis is on the enumeration of the number of ways in which the arrangement may be made. All right, and then here are the contents. So it starts with permutations and combinations. You've probably seen those. Inversion formulae, then generating functions and recursions. Then it goes to partitions. Here we have distinct representatives, Ramsey's theorem, some extremal problems, convex spaces and linear programming, graphical methods, de Bruijn sequences, block designs, different sets, finite geometries, orthogonal Latin squares, Hadamard matrices, general constructions of block designs. And then we have theorems on completion and embedding here uh, at the end here. Okay, and yeah, and it doesn't seem like there's answers in the back. I, I don't believe uh, this book has has any answers. It has some tables and bibliography, and yeah, no, it doesn't doesn't provide that much help. Um, this is a pretty nice book. Uh, it's very elegant. It's very rigorous. It's you know, it's a solid math book. It has this little string which I love. Um, I don't know if it's been reprinted. And by the way, I don't know if it's available. If I can find it, I will. Um, I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave a link. What's this say here? The theorems of P. Hall and D. Koenig. A problem of the type we shall discuss here is, given the following five sets, we've got one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five, three, four, five, six. Oh, but look at this, we have three, four, five, six. We wish to choose numbers x sub one through x sub five such that x i is an s of i from one to five and such that the x's are all distinct. I see one such choice is, but if our sets were instead, so if you change the sets, I see. No such choice would be possible, since clearly we could choose three distinct numbers uh, from T1, T2, T3, because they contain only the two numbers between them, 1 and 2. We ask under what circumstances, okay, under what circumstances, subsets S sub I, I running from 1 through N, of a set S possess distinct representatives X sub I, where I runs from 1 through N. That is, X sub I and S sub I, uh, and then uh, X sub I not equal to X sub J if I not equal to J. Note that we do not require that subsets S sub I and S sub J with I not equal to J be distinct as subsets of S. A clearly necessary condition as seen in 5.1.2 for the existence of distinct representatives is that any K sets S sub I contain between them at least K distinct elements. And I guess here's here's more of that. So pretty hardcore. Um, it's got a lot of stuff and you, you know it goes pretty quickly. Um, so definitely not for uh, the faint of heart. But as a collector, uh, it's just a nice book to have. Um, you know, yeah, just wanted to show it to you. It's pretty neat. 
Uh, you learn, by the way, you learn. So where would you learn this stuff? Let me just tell you. So if you take a class uh, on statistics, you'll do like a little bit of the permutation and combination stuff and like a little bit of the stuff, but not a lot. Um, you could take a class as an undergrad on combinatorics. In that case, you would you would do all of this or you would do some of these things. There's a lot of stuff in this book that you wouldn't do. I mean, this, this book contains a ton of information, right? So, yeah, um, a, a course on combinatorics, obviously. Also, uh, if you're a computer science major, if you were to take a course on discrete mathematics, you then you would do uh, some counting stuff. You might even do generating functions. Um, so you do permutations, you know, combinations, arrangements, you know, de derangements. You do all kinds of stuff um, with counting. Uh, recurrence relations, you use those to solve counting problems. That's pretty cool, too. So, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of ways um, to frame counting problems. And you, you can study that in, with, you know, a book, a book like this one. Combinator Let's take the dust jacket off just to see... Oh, wow, look how blue that is. Wow, that's blue. Wow, wow. That is a blue book. Jeez, that is so blue. Such a blue book. Yeah, it's a fancy, fancy book. But the prereq for this, I mean, for this book is just definitely just, you know, you want to have some math background, I think, before you, uh, before you jump into it. So, yeah, discrete math is where you would see this uh, combinatorics class. Uh, you would see this, um, yeah. It's got some calculus in here, as you can see as well. So, you know, looking at asymptotic properties of p sub n, yeah. So it's some infinite series. I mean, or fine, those are finite. Yeah, generating functions and recursions. Let's look at this. Rules and properties. If u sub zero, u sub one, u sub two through u sub n is a sequence of numbers. We may associate with this sequence a generating function g of x by this rule here. So we have g of x equal to this. If this series has a circle of convergence with radius r greater than zero, then it may happen that the properties of the function g of x enable us to achieve, enable us to evaluate the coefficients u sub n or at least give estimates of their order of magnitude or perhaps find other information of value. If h of x is the generating function of the sequence b sub 0 through b sub n, then we have this here. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Yeah, combinatorial problems. Yeah. Nice book. Anyways, uh, check it out if you want. It's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find any copies. Um, I, I don't think this is like a $5 book. I know this looks really fancy, so it just feels like it's hard to find. But yeah, I, I will look. I hope it's been helpful. Take care.